Starting off chapter 10, we're going to take a look at ordinary annuities and the special case of an ordinary annuity being an ordinary simple annuity. So what we had before is we've always had a compound interest question where we had some present value with some growth into a future value. And we did some special cases of maybe where we changed some, some value during time. But what if we're looking at a loan or we're looking at a retirement plan, anything where we're going to have regular payments? Whether we're going to pay something on a regular basis or whether we're going to receive money on a regular basis, this is where we call it an annuity. And to start off, we're looking at is a ordinary annuity. And what we say here is we have one payment for each period. One payment for each period. And we're also going to say that we have the same compounding frequency. So we, we say we have one payment for each compounding period, for each compounding. So we could have multiple payments. Three each are going to be compounded in each period, have a payment each period. And if we did this math separately, what we look at is, say we had $10,000 here, and we're going to make $500 payments. For the first period, we would have interest on $10,000. Then we'd make a payment, and then we'd have interest on $500 less, but we'd have accrued interest. And then it'd be $500 less, 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 and then it'd be $500 less. And until now, to do this, we'd have to take that value back there, and this value back there, and this value back there, and this value back there. And we have to do multiple calculations. One for each payment because we had a different value because the principal was changing each time. But since we do this so often, we do this with, with uh, payments and loans and everything else, we're going to say, we have a, the future value of a whole set of payments is equal to the size of each payment times 1 plus i to the n minus 1 over i because we're doing a whole bunch of different payments. Well, again, we're not going to probably use the formula very much, but we will use the calculator. And so what we do is now we use the payment button. Okay. So nothing like getting into a, uh, a problem right away. We're going to say we'll do uh, Let's really do a simple problem. We're going to say we're going to invest. Uh, we're going to start uh, investing $400 every month. So uh, to build a retirement plan or retirement savings, we're going to have we pay $400 at the end of each month into a plan. Okay. And we're going to be very boring and very religious about it and we're going to do this starting at age 20 and we're going to do it every month 
until retirement at age 65. Well, that's a lot of payments. So if we take a look at our timeline, we say, well, we're gonna start with nothing. We're gonna start with no value here. And we're gonna make payments every month over and over and over up until some time when we're, we're gonna retire. So looking at, looking at this, well, we also need a, an interest rate. We're gonna say we're gonna make 6% compounded monthly. And what we have an end, re end result of this is, again, we'll just use our calculator. We're gonna say our present value, this was zero. Our i per y is just like we had before where we say i is equal to j over m, which is equal to 6% over 12, which is 0.5%. So our i per y is 0 0.5. Our n, this is probably our largest n we've ever had. Our n is going to be, well, from age 20 to age 65, that's 65 minus 20. 45 years at 12 times per year. Forty-five times twelve. Five hundred and forty payments. Five hundred and forty times we're gonna pay four hundred dollars a month. Now we have a new value which is our PMT, and because we're paying, we're going to do minus four hundred. It's four hundred dollars that we're paying, it's a minus value. And we're going to compute this future value to be, oh, we had 540 as an N, we had 0.5 as an I, we had zero as our present value. Now we have a $400 payment, so negative value as our payment, and we're going to compute the future value to be a fairly large number. 1,102,397 dollars and five cents. So, $400 a month from now, age 20, to 65, age of retirement, you have 1,102,397 dollars in the bank. A millionaire. Well, the second interesting thing about this is if you have not zero, but say you started off with a tiny little value, we're gonna do our timeline again, and we say we're gonna invest $1,000 here right at the beginning. So we have $1,000 lump sum, or sorry, $10,000 lump sum, plus $400 every month, and we don't know what the value is at the end. Well, here our present value is now not zero, it's some value, and all the rest is the same, so I per Y is still equal to 0 0.5, N is still 540. Our payment is still negative 400. But now, we have to make sure that if we're investing a payment of 400 and it's negative, our present value also needs to be negative. So this is really where the cash flow convention comes in and becomes important. So difference, if we put $10,000 negative as our present value, we're gonna compute the future value to be one million two hundred and fifty thousand hundred and ninety six dollars and sixty eight cents. So for an extra ten thousand dollars we see we get basically an extra hundred and hundred and forty seven thousand as as a difference in, in the end. 
But if we put the sign in the wrong way, we put in $10,000 positive, and we compute the future value, this is now going to work. It's not going to give us an error because it couldn't calculate a value, but say $954,597, which happens to be the wrong value. So the idea here is if we're investing our $10,000, if this is an investment and it's negative, and this is an investment and it's negative, we better make sure that they're the same sign. And in fact, I can recall the present value and it's positive, and if I put in the payment as positive and I compute the future value, it's exactly the same value as we had before, it's just the sign is now opposite. So we have to make sure that our values are consistent between them again, and it gets more complicated because now we have not only PV and FV, which usually have to be, well, always have to be negative, we have PV, FV, and payment, and payment has to match either the present value or the future value. Take another close look at this. We take a look at our problem above where we say we made 540 payments at $400 each, and we paid well, 540 times 400 we only paid $216,000. But we had $1,102,397.05. So if we say $1,102,397.05 minus We actually made $886,397.05 in interest. Okay. And this interest is based on a lot of interest for this one payment, the first payment here, and no interest at the end. Taking a really close look at this diagram, what we have is we have $10,000 invested here, and we go a month, and this is $400 invested here. This is the, the first payment is at the end of the month. The second payment's going to be at the end of the next month. The third payment's going to be at the end of the next month. And we go on and on and on. And as we go to the end, this is where our future value is going to be. And it's also $400. This is the, the point of the last payment. So if we actually take a look at it, there's absolutely no interest earned on this last payment and a lot of interest earned on this first payment.